Well, tomorrow the Lowy Institute will release the findings of a major national survey of being Chinese in Australia. It's one of the largest studies of the Chinese-Australian community ever undertaken and comes at a time of heightened tensions between our two countries. Well, let's take a look at some of the key findings of this landmark report. Firstly, well over a third of Chinese Australians were treated less favourably because of their heritage. Over 18% reported being physically threatened or attacked. Now, almost 46% half say they are concerned about China's influence in Australia's political processes, but now that is significantly lower than the broader Australian population. And more than half of those surveyed used social media platform WeChat for the bulk of their consumption and refer mostly to Chinese party media such as Xinhua and the People's Daily. Well, to discuss this report and the experience of the Chinese community in Australia, we're joined by ABC bilingual reporter Samuel Yang, who joins us out of Sydney, and Associate Professor of Media and Communication at RMIT University, Dr. Hai Ching Yu, who is in Melbourne. Thanks to you both for joining us. Such interesting um, statistics and figures coming out of this extensive research. Sam, I might start with you. And it should be noted that the overall experience is very positive. But some of the figures are alarming. 37% reported being discriminated against because of their heritage. Now, you did extensive reporting on this last year. We knew it was happening, but in such high numbers? Yes, it is alarming, but I'm not surprised. Because last year, my team, the ABC's Asia Pacific Newsroom, launched a national investigation into the COVID-19 related racism. And we received hundreds of responses from our readers across the country saying they have either seen or experienced racism against the Chinese or the Asian community. And also there was a survey late last year conducted by ANU has also shown over 80% of the Asian Australians have experienced discrimination in 2020 alone. So the Lowy survey findings are consistent in with what I found in my reporting and uh, relevant research, researches. Having said that, the government did come out and condemn the racist behaviours at all levels. And uh, the Chinese Australian participants in the, in the survey do feel they are accepted by Australian society and they they said that Australia is a good place to live. Mm. So, Hai Ching, uh, concerningly, 18% say they've been physically threatened or attacked. Now, what do you think played into that? Sam's talked about the COVID crisis and, of course, there was lots of anti-China rhetoric during that. But what else do you think are factors in that sort of physical attack and uh, uh, targeting of the Chinese-Australia community? Hey, Dave. Um, we, uh, as Sam has pointed out, there are increasing cases of racism against Chinese and Asians in Australia during the COVID-19 uh, outbreak, but also before that. And the increasing hate discussion about China's influence in Australia has contributed to the rising cases. But my concern is not just about the increasing number of cases, but how people respond to such racism, particularly those at the receiving end. Uh, that matters a lot to me. Can I elaborate? Yeah, you give us an that? idea of what you mean by that. How do you, how do you think they should respond? All right. What I have observed is overwhelmingly uh, positive response. Well, on one hand, we see Chinese community members, particularly the leaders, have privately and openly declared their frustration at, the, at their collateral damage for being caught in and in a crossfire between the dip diplomatic and the trade tensions of the two countries. On the other hand, they have reached out to fellow Chinese Australians by procuring and donating masks last year and the personal protective, protective equipment to hospitals, community organizations, essential services, etc. And most of these activities actually happened quietly behind the scene and um, are coordinated via WeChat through various WeChat groups and WeChat public accounts. At the same time, they have tried to defend Australia and speak back 
at the Australian racism rhetoric of the Chinese government, particularly after China warned against Chinese tourists and the students to come to Australia in mid-2020. They defended Australia as a safe destination for study, and also they provided first-hand evidence to Chinese parents who may have concerns about sending their children to study in Australia. So all of this effort have taken place despite media panic about Chinese influence in Australia, despite all the increasing number of cases of racism against Chinese uh, and, and the Asian Australians. So what I see is the generosity and the kindness of Chinese Australians in face of anti-China and anti-Chinese racism. Yeah, I'll come back to that a little later. Sam, I'd also like to talk to you about um, this notion of foreign interference. Now, Beijing's heavy-handedness against Australia has been such a hot topic. Now, we saw in the survey 46% say they're concerned about China's influence. Now, that is far less than the 86% of the broader Australian population. What did you make of that? Well, it is concerning that, because um, I thought the, that figure would be higher given how much we have seen about Chinese influence in Australia's political system in the media coverage. And uh, because of that, um, people in, from the community, um, when they consume those kind of news, they, um, it, it, it does cause... Um, uh, give them a sense of um, uh, urgency and uh, they feel that they should pay more attention to that problem. But uh, overall, I think um, uh, because uh, it, it does show uh, a divided opinion within the, Ch uh, the Chinese Australian community over that question. Uh, let's come to you, Hai Ching, about um, media consumption. Now, this is a, a very fascinating part of this survey that ca came out, that over um, really high numbers uh, in terms of 84% of people who were surveyed got their information on, ch on Chinese language media from WeChat and very high numbers, 64% getting their English news from WeChat. Now, that's a very high consumption through social media. Why do you think that's the primary f source of information for Chinese Australians? Um, I think this is a general trend uh, nowadays, whether you speak to Chinese Australians or other migrant communities about the news consumption habit. The majority of people, particularly young people, have all shifted to online media, whether it's you know website or the social media platforms, although they may not use WeChat. Um, for the Chinese case, I, I find this number, 84%, uh, is very high, uh, which is different from the surveys that Wan Yingsun uh, and I conducted about, you know, in 2018 and 2019, we did two large surveys among the first generation Chinese migrants from the PRC to Australia. Um, and our finding actually said, uh, find, we find that as many as 60 percent of those identified WeChat as their primary source of news and information, and more than 59 percent always or often access English language news of Australian, of, of Australian mainstream media. Well, less than 53% uh, actually access Chinese mainstream media. So I wonder, I question how the number is so high in this Lowy uh, report. I, I question the sampling bias in the survey. Uh, because a Chinese person with Australian citizenship or permanent resident who has lived in Australia for over 20 years will have very different media consumption habits from another Chinese person who is a Chinese student or visitor who has lived in the country for a very limited period of time. A person with high level of English proficiency will also have different media consumption practices from mm. another person who cannot read English at all. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't know. So it's slightly different, the... but still very high numbers of, mm. of consumption at a social media level as a primary source. And Sam, when we look at that, a lot of that is coming out of state-backed media like Xinhua and the People's Daily, which is a very biased view of the issues at play. Well, it is. Uh, it can be damaging to uh, for people entrusting the the Australian government because uh, when 
people tuning into the social media or tuning into the state-run media platforms because they are highly censored platforms. So the, uh, they have to follow the rules and laws of the Chinese government. So the government actually can control the narratives when people consume that kind of news and uh, they can be trapped in that kind of narratives which can cause tensions between those two, uh, between China and Australia. And, and, and uh, uh, Hai-Ching, you know, it is interesting because the survey also showed a strong loyalty to Australia and a strong love of Australia, but also a strong loyalty to China. Does that create a conflict on how they make decisions around who to believe when issues in play like political fearance come to the fore? It's a very good question. Um, Chinese Australians are capable of dealing with ambiguities, particularly when it comes to identity. They love China and Australia at the same time. They consume English language news as well as Chinese language news. Um, I am actually quite puzzled by this finding of the Law Institute. 78% uh, to 8% prefers uh, Xinhua or China's People's Daily uh, because it contradicts with our finding through our survey because we found that most Mandarin-speaking respondents do not regularly access news and information directly from mainland Chinese media, particularly state media. Only 20% said they regularly access news from sources such as Xinhua and the People's Daily. Um, you know, you, when you look at, it depends on what kind of cohort you're looking at. And it can be misleading when you look at Chinese language media. But uh, uh, Ching, what kind of Chinese media? Yeah, but I'd, I'd love to come back to a point that you made in summary to both of you, really. Um, w when there is the sense of there is a perception as to how this kind of uh, attack, for example, this, this discrimination against Chinese people is received, the platforms with which the Chinese Australian community is engaging is really critical in terms of getting that messaging out. Some of the examples you gave us earlier is how do we engage more domestically um, in terms of this, this very vast population, it's now 1.2 million people, how do we engage more domestically to both of you in terms of this issue going forward as briefly as you can possibly be? Sam, you go. I think um, uh, I have uh, I've been speaking to some of the experts uh, in this field, and they have expressed that uh, the, the findings from the Lowy survey uh, present uh, some major policy gaps for the Australian government, and uh, it is an urgent. Uh, there is an urgent need for the government to better engage the Chinese Australian community. I think perhaps uh, this Lowy Institute um, survey is a good starting point, given the wide range of topics they've touched on and also uh, it's uh, it's called one of one of kind um, in the uh, in the polling field and so they can shed some light um, on rare lights um, on the lives of Chinese Australians in Australia and uh, uh, Perhaps, uh, um, and also the Lowy Institute said that they will have more research down the track in the coming years. Uh, perhaps that they will uh, provide, provide more insights. And uh, when, when, the, when the survey is made public tomorrow, I'm pretty sure there are, um, we, we can see more responses from Indeed. the policymakers. And Hai Ching, briefly, I mean, we do need to, to see more engagement in, uh, with the policymakers with these sorts of issues, don't we? Yes, we do, because we have both reports, uh, the lawyer report and our report, have highlighted the untapped value of the Chinese language media, such as WeChat, uh, for political engagement, citizenship education, and Australia's foreign policy agenda towards China. Um, the Australian government, uh, as well as individual politicians, for that matter, would pass up a particularly valuable resource if we do, did not find effective ways to exploit this platform to make use of the valuable resources among the Chinese community, who majority of whom actually love this country, love living in Australia, and love to promote Australia. Great to talk to you both. Thank you so much for this uh, discussion on a very interesting and important topic.